Hi, my name is Anne Jangle, currently on African Dream Parade Tour, raising <laughs> awareness for endangered wildlife and uplifting communities through music. Um, Recycling, woman alone from South Africa to Kenya, and I am crossing into the Kenyan border. Hi, my name is Anne Jangle. I was on the African Dream Parade tour raising awareness for endangered wildlife and uplifting communities through music. I cycled woman alone from the South African Ramotswa border post of Botswana to Kenya. I didn't think it through. I didn't do any planning. I didn't realize that it would be so cold because when you think of Botswana, you always think heat. My sleeping bag turns out to be not <clears throat> sub-zero as I thought. Um, but at least there's coffee. <laughs> yeah, it was so much going through my mind. What am I doing? Why am I doing this? Am I sure this is what I want to do? And um, luckily for me, I think maybe I'm too um, I'm too hard-headed to stop once I've started something. So even if it kills me, I have to finish it. It's absolutely beautiful. This is probably one of the best days of my life. Nature, man. Once my friend Misha dropped me off at the border, I realized that uh, there was no turning back and this was this was just me and this bicycle that I literally learned how to change the bicycle tire a week prior to me getting dropped off at the Botswana border I've never been to Botswana in my life I didn't have the right shoes sleeping bag or tent oh think twice it's just another day in paradise. Ow! But I just remember I needed to just, I needed to do this. I needed to make big enough scene about what it is that I'm really passionate about, and that is to uplift communities with music and raise awareness for animals. The first couple of days of my cycling journey was a bit of a nightmare. You know when you, you're so overwhelmed with just stress and, and a bit of anxiety and you don't know what's going on and what am I doing and um, yeah, I was building up. So by the time I actually started cycling, I think once I got on the bicycle and I just I went, it was almost like I, I could relax. So I got really, really sick. I was quite scared because, I mean, I was alone in this country. I didn't know anyone. I was on a bicycle and there were wild animals around. And I just thought I was insane. The first village I slept in, in Botswana, what I would do is I would go into the middle of a village and I would generally go to a school first because they usually have some local person there. Um, as I was talking to the security guard, the principal actually came out and she goes, hey, what do you want? And I explained to her what I was doing and she was just so baffled by this crazy white lady on a bicycle in, a, in the middle of this village. She's, she said, you're my guest and uh, you need to be treated with respect and this is my home. And I told her that I, I would like to come talk to her kids in the morning if she doesn't mind. I have my little backpacker's guitar, little Martin Mini backpacker's guitar. <clears throat> and it was the most beautiful, beautiful experience. It was the first school I went to 
and I sang to the kids and they loved it and the teachers loved it. They were doing that all like la, 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 thing. And it was just so, it was so beautiful. But Botswana, when I came here, everybody with a warm heart and they smile and they're happy and they laugh and they give me a place to sleep. <laughs> And nice tea, it's really nice. So thank you very much. And Botswana was super special for me because it was my first country that I cycled through. It was the first animal encounters. It was the first school, the first children interaction I had. And I really felt so like positive, like finally the message, the reason why I'm doing this, it's gonna land on fertile soil. So this is lunch, <coughs> pilchers and rice in a Ziploc bag next to the highway. With tuk-tuk crackers. Maybe it's just one tuk. But I would want to call it a tuk-tuk. And there's of course just Magnificent headwind all the bloody way there. <laughs> wow, man, when I got to, because I went into Zimbabwe, um, when I got to that Zimbabwe border, it was the best feeling on earth. I was just overwhelmed with, with, it really boosted my confidence a lot. So I was so proud of myself. And then it really fueled my fire for the rest of the journey. I was like, yeah, one down, five or six to go, let's do this. Hi, my name is Anne Jangle, currently on the African Dream Parade Tour, raising awareness for endangered wildlife and uplifting communities through music. And I'm now at Vic Falls. And ever since I was a kid, I've wanted to see Vic Falls. So I couldn't believe I cycled here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, wow. I saw Zambia before I entered Zambia because at Vic Falls you stand on the one side and on the other side is Zambia. So while I'm looking at this amazing Victoria Falls, I'm just seeing the other side. I'm like, woo, there's the next country. Zambia was almost the country that I knew the least about. My reason for specifically going to Zambia was because I got invited to play at the Zambezi Shores Music Festival. Uh, we are now on the Zambezi River here in Zambia and we have just arrived at the festival ground where the Zambezi Shores Festival is going to be held on the 28th of September. It's on a little island in the middle of this giant river and you sign an indemnity form so everyone that comes to this festival um, yeah, I mean, there's, you can't swim, there's crocodiles, you'll get eaten. Um, and it's the weirdest thing standing on a, on a stage performing music when you know it's like wild animals that can kill you all around you. And it's boiling hot, but you can't swim. So you're going to eat my crocodile. Here's my little guitar, and um, yeah, on our way to Malawi, we've been on the road for a couple of days. I have a friend joining, uh, who I just met, called George, and uh, yeah, we, we're climbing these hills together. So in Lusaka, I had heard of a 
another cyclist who <laughs> was um, also pretty not so clued up like me about wind. So most most cyclists that do the the African, the East African route, uh, Egypt to Cape Town, Cape to Egypt, they go from Egypt north to Cape South because of the headwind. So me and this guy were the only two guys going the opposite direction. So we literally had wind. For like, I think I had wind for like six of the seven months, eight months of cycling. <laughs> Video. <laughs> so Naomi is the bicycle not too heavy? It's not heavy. No. <laughs> this is ambient woman are strong. We are very strong because we face too much problems. Yes, because we face too much problems, yes. We are the main drinking beer. Yes. yes. I really love that section um, just before the just before you order. No, it's Jakarta, is it that big famous market? They have the, you go through this stretch of um, just oh, the people are just so incredibly artistic and talented and the things they do with their hands, their carvings and their paintings and their jewelry and the um, like the mats they make and the bags they make and everything from plants it's so it's super organic and you know it's very earth conscious and it's so simple but so beautiful yeah I loved it I love Zambia Zambia surprised me Hi, my name is Anne Jangle, currently on the African Gene Parade Tour, raising <laughs> awareness for endangered wildlife and uplifting communities through music. Uh, I just made it to Lake Malawi. <laughs> I'm just leaving my shoes there, I don't care if anyone steals it. Oh my god, I'm here! <laughs> when I got into Malawi, uh, all I could think about was Lake Malawi. Um, and for someone who grew up by the ocean, uh, Lake Malawi was really confusing because it sounds like the ocean, it looks like the ocean, it's not the ocean. I was just so overwhelmed, I was really happy, happy to see Lake Malawi. That was also together with um, a few other things like Victoria Falls that I'd always wanted to experience in my life. So uh, that was cool. And then um, as I went further up north, I also really, really loved um, the mushroom farm in Livingstonia. That was um, the toughest climb I'd ever experienced in my life because um, it was purely gravel road and they were building. So it was just giant clouds of dust and trucks going past and... <laughs> Just another day in the life of a Mzungu white cyclist here in Malawi. I am on the uh, on the massive hill uh, road between Livingston and Chitemba. That is Lake Malawi over there, and uh, this is the terrain that you cycle on. It was, I mean, a few times I would actually slide back. My bicycle would just slide, slide back for, for quite far. Because, I mean, your bicycle's just loaded. It's just loaded. It's packed. So when I got to Makuzi, Makuzi Beach Lodge, I met a really amazing Norwegian man who had been coming to Malawi for many, many years. Um, and he was building schools. I started going with them because they would have to go to all these schools and do touch-ups and um, measure out areas to build more classrooms. And 
I remember at one stage we did about six schools a day and I would, I would notice how when I go into the class the interaction is really natural until you take a phone out. I would take out my phone and I'd, I'd want to kind of capture the moment but then I've, I almost felt like I was being a little bit fake to get a reaction from them, you know, like, hi, you know, and then why specifically go hi, like flipping white people always do, you know. And then I just, I remember I, I put my phone back into my, into my fanny pack and I was like, I'm done, I'm done filming people. But yeah, then when I stopped filming in classrooms, I even connected with the children more. And I felt like I was getting my message across more. And um, children were a little more receptive to me. I am in Tanzania, about 50 kilometers north of, I mean east. East of Bea. And there's a ma 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 mountain in front of me that I don't feel like climbing. But I'm. That's it. There's no way around it. I had zero expectations for Tanzania. I had no idea what was potting in there and I just, I hit it. By the time I got to Tanzania, I felt so liberated, empowered, free. It was the most beautiful thing, the friendliest people I ever met in my life. It was the safest I ever felt, the most delicious fruit. It was really easy to get food. There was food everywhere on the side of the road. Um, my tent has kind of had enough of life and uh, life in Africa. Survive. <laughs> yeah, that's that right there is all I own. I feel a little tired today, and um, I think I should stay another day. But I really want to cycle through the national park. To loads of wild animals. The Makuzi National Park is known for their leopards. Um, I did not fear a thing. I got on my bicycle and I hit my first, I hit the first rains. So it was a really, really big, very wet rainstorm. Some giraffe. Some zebra. It was just green, lush jungle for hours and hours and hours. This is the road between Borogoro and uh, Morogoro, sorry, and Dar es Salaam, and there are just trucks. Trucks and buses and trucks and buses and trucks and buses. And of course, this is where I will get a flat because that is just Murphy's Law. And also, I guess there couldn't be a more beautiful place to get a flat. Let's just be positive if I lose my flippin' shit. So oh, when I got into Bagamoyo, that day was the toughest cycle day of my life. I would cycle a couple of kilometers and I would stop, I'd get off my bicycle and I'd sit on the side of the road. I was just, I was exhausted. I remember just sitting on the side of the road and this guy was sitting next to me and I think my energy just drained him because I was talking, talking, talking and as I looked at him, he was just sleeping next to me, he was just passed out. Um, anyway, when I got to Bagamoyo, it was the most beautiful, the most beautiful place I'd ever seen in my life. Um, Bagamoy actually means to lay your heart down and that's exactly what happened. I laid my heart down there and, and my dream is to live there one day. It's day 187 um, and I think I might have malaria. So I'm going to do a malaria test now. We'll see how it goes. 
Yeah, I think my body was just tired. I was just, I was exhausted. I needed a break because, oh. I mean, for six, seven months straight, for someone that didn't do any extreme exercise <laughs> before this journey, it's a lot for your body. You don't realize it. I mean, I think mentally and emotionally a whole lot more than it is physically. And every part of me was just, I was tired, I was exhausted, I had enough. And then I got this malaria test kit. I don't know if you can see there. So no malaria for me. Luckily, I, I didn't have malaria. I was convinced the test was a bit wrong, but anyway. <laughs> I was glad to see the negative result. So I had to take the ferry from Dar es Salaam because I wanted to go to Zanzibar. Uh, my dad is a very big Queen fan and I wanted to see where Queen lived, um, Freddie Mercury. And I ended up having the time of my life in Zanzibar, as one does. So when I got to Zanzibar, it was started getting a bit dark. Um, they thought they'd lost my bicycle. I thought someone stole it because no one could find my bicycle. So that was a big panic, but I remembered I was just calm and I knew that if there's anything I learned by now, that panic doesn't help anything, just stay calm and look around and someone's about to help you. Anyway, I finally got the bicycle and um, when you get off in Stonetown, um, off the ferry, the, one of the biggest first buildings you get is the Dow Music Academy. And um, if there's one thing I know, it's just follow the music, man. If you're ever in a tight spot, just sit in a village somewhere. If you don't know where to sleep, if you don't know where your food's gonna come from, if anything, I have music to give and I have music to relate to the people. So you're bound to meet another musician somewhere and or pretty much 100% of the time they, they will help you or point you in the right direction. I saw this sign and I went in and um, some people told me that there would be a um, sem like a seminar, like a lecture by Dele Sassimi and I'm like, Dele Sassimi? I'm like, wait a minute, that's the keys player for Fela Kuti, which I'm a huge fan of. Um, the late Fela Kuti who died in the 70s, um, Nigerian, incredible musician, he, st he invented Afrobeat music. Um, anyway, true and jangled style, I wormed my, my way in um, to perform with him at a festival on the east side of the island. So all these musicians uh, went in their, their little cars and I said, I'll meet you guys there tomorrow, I'm cycling. What the hell is that? It was incredible performing on a stage with these musicians of that calibre. They were all from all over the world, uh, London, Netherlands, um, all over Africa, Nigeria, just, oh man, it was really, I really upped my game there. So it, it definitely affected the way I made music after that and how I would write and um, yeah, I learned a lot from them. Went back to Bagamoyo, um, and then and then Ben joined me from Germany, um, and then he, yeah, he cycled with me from Bagamoyo to Kalifi in Kenya. This is Ben. Hola, ¿qué tal? How are you? Ben is being burned to a crisp because of his fluorescent German skin. German, huh? The highlight of my whole trip was me crossing the Kenyan border 
Oh, um, it was very, I was, it was very emotional. Hi, my name is Anne Jangle, currently on the African Dream song. Parade Tour, raising awareness for endangered wildlife and uplifting communities through music. Um, it is day 196, and I am crossing into the Kenyan border. Um, I started cycling on the South African side of Botswana, the Ramotswa border post, and um, I went through woman alone on my bicycle. Heat on my skin. No, South Africa, Botswana, Zimbabwe, Zambia, Malawi, Tanzania, and Kenya. Um, thank you so much for everybody that has been a part of my journey. I would not have been able to do this without you guys. Um, I'm pretty emotional right now. It's been an incredible journey and it's... amount of emotions you experience out there by yourself um, in the middle of Africa. The, I mean, you go from these extreme highs to these extreme lows. Um, you learn so much about yourself. I mean, there was one stage where for two days I didn't see one single person. And then I realized how we get so distracted by noise and TV and cell phones and rules and time. When you do something like this, where you go cycling for so many months by yourself, it's almost like every single day I would just get lighter and lighter and lighter and go deeper into myself and just I did so much healing and as I went crossed over into Kenya I just felt like I was levitating man I was just I felt so light and so joyed and so healed I didn't even know who I was anymore People get impossible and difficult so confused. People think because they, they say something is difficult, you automatically, it means impossible. It doesn't, it's gonna take a little longer.